What is going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And what we're going to be talking about is Terraform versus HashiCorp CDK. What it is, why you would want to use one or the other, what the languages kind of look like, and ultimately where we see the languages heading. So with that, let's head over to VS Code. We're going to take a look at both and we're going to see exactly what's going on here. All right, so first let's look at Terraform. Okay, now Terraform, as you may know, it's an infrastructure as code language. So really the idea here is that instead of, you know, going to UI, spinning up resources, or, you know, just using PowerShell or another automation and scripting language or something like that to do it for you, you have infrastructure as code. Now what this does is it actually creates a state for you. And that state essentially is metadata of your environment. So Anytime anything gets deleted, updated, modified, created, anything like that, Terraform knows about it. And more importantly, you'll know about it. So for example, you can see I'm using Azure here. So I'm using the Azure RM provider. And then I have a resource here that's creating a resource group. So if I were to create the resource group with a variable, it's going to be one name. But then let's say, you know, I wanted to change it to test one or something like that. What'll happen is there'll be an update to the code and what's going to come back is terraform is going to say oh wait there's an update to the name here now it's a name so it'll probably end up recreating because of the immutable nature of terraform or of hcl rather anything that you do in terraform there's a record of it which is really good because if you go through a console and hit next 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 there's usually not a record of that so it makes it a little bit difficult to troubleshoot what's going on now, another big thing is with Terraform and infrastructure as code in general is, of course, there's all of the automation. So, you know, you don't have to go through and clicky clicky next next anymore. You can just write it all as code, which makes it much easier for somebody to come in, see what's happening in the environment and then understand what's going on. So this is infrastructure as code. Now, when you think of a CDK like a cloud development kit, there's a few. AWS has one. Pulumi is another CDK. But HashiCorp actually has their own, and it just recently hit version 0.4. So let me now go to the code that contains the HashiCorp CDK. Okay, now as you can see, this is a little bit different. This isn't infrastructure as code. This is actually using a general purpose programming language. So with a general purpose programming language, you can use Python, Go, C Sharp, whatever, whatever. And what it does is, it's technically still infrastructure as code, but what we're seeing it called a lot now is something called infrastructure as software. So essentially what that means is it's infrastructure as code, but with a general purpose programming language. So if we go down here, we see that we have a class, we're initializing the app, which is being imported in from CDKTF. And then ultimately what this is doing is, this is creating our stacks workspace, okay? So if you wanted to go in, you wanted to create a resource group in Azure or something in AWS, whatever the case may be, you can actually do it here as well. So the question then becomes like, why would you want to use one over the other? Well, what I've seen is a lot of sysadmins and infrastructure folks, they don't really code all that much. And if they do, it's a lot of automation. So infrastructure as code makes a little bit more sense because it's more modularized and a little bit easier to read essentially if you're not a developer. Now, why would you want to use a CDK? Well, there's a few reasons. Number one, if you're a developer and you're comfortable with say Python, Go, C Sharp, whatever, and you don't want to jump into HCL, you would want to use a CDK. Another big reason too is this is all really just Python here. Like there's nothing different. It's straight up Python code or any language that you use. So if you're using again, Go or C Sharp, it's going to be the same thing. And because of that, you have a few more developer tools. You have testing, like unit testing, integration testing, mock testing. Other developers on the team can read it. And more importantly, developers can create that infrastructure as code or those cloud services without somebody having to do it with infrastructure as code. That they could actually do it themselves. So with that, that's essentially the biggest differences that you're going to see between Terraform and something like the CDK. Really appreciate you tuning in. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again next time.